Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. In this video, I'm going to give you my best tips in Lightroom in 2021 to get the best out of your photography, to get this kind of result. And the last tips are the base, so stay all the way till the end. Bonjour, mesdames et messieurs. My name is Serge Germany. I'm a French photographer from the amazing, the incredible cities of Paris, France, living in Florida, USA. And today I wanted to sort of do a review video on Lightroom and really the main trick that I use to get really, really very colorful, very strong photos. I want to give you an example to one of the most crazy sunsets I've ever witnessed in 15 years I did photography in Paris. So here I am sitting on the Pont Alexandre III and I see this incredible sunset and so I position myself so as to get the sun to be right under the armpit of that statue here. So that's the normal exposure. I did an underexposure and I did, uh, sorry, that's an overexposure and that's an underexposure. I, I shot this years ago with like a Canon 5D Mark II. Um, yeah, look at this. The date is uh, from 2013, eight years ago. And, uh, but I want to show you, I, lo I love to review my like old role files and show you read the tricks that matters the most in Lightroom. So tip number one, correct the exposure for the story you want to tell. Now, what is the story I want to tell? I was fascinated by that sunset. So there's two things I can do. I could, the, you know, because I've got three exposures, what I can do is I can take my normal, my under, my over story in my under, and I can right click and go to photo merge and go into HDR to make like a sort of a super raw file. Uh, I'm not looking for the HDR look, I'm just looking to get the best out of everything. So auto align, one thing that's very important, I did some tests, it's good to have deghost amount on high because when the sun is right in the frame, you can get some um, little effect. And I'll show you why it's important in a minute. So I'm gonna merge this into one raw file. I've actually already done this. So you see uh, the deghosting effect is on the right side and the known deghosting effect is on the left side. And you see how you have a little bit of like a, a halo around the nose and the statue. That's what happened when you use, you don't use deghosting effect. Uh, you can, so with deghosting effect, I get a little more noise in a statue, but I don't get anything else there. And voila, so that's why I use deghosting effect. So we're gonna use the HDR now. now Let's find the exposure. What story do I want to tell? I want to tell the story of that sunset because it was a crazy sunset. And all I want is to have this statue as a foreign element. If you ever go to Paris, uh, you know, on a night like this, you will see thousands of people taking photos of the Eiffel Tower with the sunset, but nobody's really working on the foreground element. And that's why it's, I think it's very important when you do cityscape to get a good foreground. And I really like that. And I waited like at least 10 minutes to get the exact position of the sun right on the armpit here. Cause I thought it was a kind of a cool effect. So the look that I want to go for is I want, I don't want to go for a very uh, overexposed look. I want to go for a sort of underexposed look. I just want to get a bit of the silhouette of the statues. You know, I, I think it would be a mistake to try to make the statues really bright like this, although it's an HDR and we can, because uh, that's not the star. The story I want to tell is a sunset. So I'm going to put just a bit of shadows. I'm going to bring down a lot of the highlights because I can. And then very important, I'm going to press the option key on my keyboard and that's going to, and I'm going to make my black point. So the black point is what you see in red and blue here is points which are 100% black. This only works if you hold down the option key on a Mac or the Alt key on Windows, very important. The Alt key or the Option key is probably the most important key in Lightroom. Okay, so now we got about two, 3% of black, I love that. We do the same thing with the white. I go all the way, but you see now under the armpit here, I'm starting to get the sun. What you see here in white is pixel, which is a 100% white. I don't want that, so I'm gonna back that off. Okay, so that was tip number one. I, uh, it's still a little too bright to me, so I'm gonna underexpose this photo. That's the exposure I wanna tell. It doesn't matter, the exposure is what the story you wanna tell, what is gonna look nice. I wanna tell this incredible sunset story with a silhouette. So, you know, I could even just do this whole thing just with the underexposed photo, and in fact, I will at the end. If you stand till the end, I'll show you. But for now, I corrected the exposure, and I like it because that's the message I wanna tell. Hey guys, I just want to tell you that my new book, Photography Central, is out. This book contains 100 of my best photography in the last 15 years. I tell you which camera I used, which setting I used, which ISO I used, which shutter speed I used. I show you some of the raw files. I'm going to give you a lot of composition tricks. You can get this for free if you watch the masterclass that comes with the book. Totally free. The link is under this video. It's going to change your photography forever. I promise. Just click 
watch if I'm live and you're gonna love this. All right, you can get the book for free if you stay until the end. Next tick is adjust the white balance for aesthetics. Don't adjust it uh, based on, you know, presets that you have here, you know, like daylight or cloudy or shade. This is just suggestion from the software. Uh, you know, I, sometimes when I do sunset now, I like to start in daylight and I just add a bit of magenta and maybe a little bit of warm. One thing you got to be very careful when you do your white balance is you don't want the sky to become gray. You see, if I add more and more yellow, there's a point where the blue here is going to become gray. I don't want that. So I leave the blue until the blue is still a bit blue and then I maybe add a bit of magenta because I love the magenta colors. But again, the white balance is an aesthetic decision. Don't get fixed that it should be daylight or shade or whatever. Do it whatever you like. Try to remember the emotion you had, the colors that you had, and try to replicate this using the white balance. That's really the best advice I can give you. You know, some of the sunset on planners are crazy. There are, uh, the other day I had a sunset here in Florida that was so magenta that I, th I don't think anybody would have believed me if I would have taken a photo. You know, so I... Remem this was eight years ago, but it was really, really, really magenta in my very reddish and magenta. The problem is that with the temp and the tint, which is the white balance, sometimes you don't get the colors as you want them. So that's the white balance. Now, tip number three, and that's something I find is very important. I see so many people now cracking up the clarity uh, and the saturation on the photo and boom, they are done. Uh, don't do that. Uh, the fact that we did an HDR, the fact that we are opening up the shadows like we are, can give a bit of an unnatural look. And sometimes just bring the clarity in minus. I do that on almost every of my photos. Brings just a little bit of natural look that you want to create. Here's the idea, is that if I over retouch this photo too much, I mean, this was a crazy sunset. It was a crazy sunset, so it's got to be a crazy photo. But if I do it too much, too much, too much, people are going to have the attention on the retouch and not on the photo. The story I want to tell is a beautiful sunset in Paris. The story I want to tell is not, oh, I made a crazy over retouching and I know how to use Photoshop kind of story. You know, I don't like people to react to my photos like, oh, you're good at Photoshop. You Photoshop this. No, I want it to be a spectacular sunset. That's, that's what we're going to try to do. So doing a bit of minus clarity and maybe be a little bit of plus texture can help because the minus clarity is just gonna make the edge you know sometimes it can handle the edge you know the, so the fringes around the statue it just can it just gives a more natural look it takes a little bit of the HDR edge off if you see what I mean okay tip number three is the white balance didn't do exactly the colors that I remembered so go to the U section tip number four adjust the U sliders to your liking. Now the use slider is especially when you have a sunset like this is very important. So what is the use slider? It's actually gonna change the color. So what I do is I just take the U and I move it around like this very fast to see what it does to the photo. See, it doesn't do much. The red doesn't do much. Let's see the orange. Ooh, the orange does a lot of things to the photo. So if I go right, it's gonna add some sort of green in my yellow. I don't like this. And I remember it was more like that. Now try not to go over 40 on these sliders. I never go over 40, but look at the difference. This is so important. That and the white balance is gonna help you have this really nice color. It was very orange more than magenta, so I think I'm gonna go all the way like to minus 28 on this one. Let's check out the yellows. Yellows does influence a little bit. On the right side, it's gonna add a little more green, and on the left side, it's gonna be just uh, fine. Check this out, before the U, after the U, changes everything, everything. It looks like a lot more from what I remember. And tip number five, and probably the most important one, is use the local tool to guide the eyes of the viewer. The problem with this photo is that this is kind of bright now, and like people are gonna look here, they're gonna look a lot here. I maybe wanna tweak the color here even more. So what I do is I first take the gradient tool, I double click on effect to put that gradient at zero, I do a little minus exposure and maybe add a little bit of blue and I click and drag a little bit. I just want to make the top of the sky a little bit darker because I want people to look at the Eiffel Tower. I want people to look here. I don't want people to look too much up there. And then I'm, I'm going to click and drag and do the same thing. So that's, you know, because by making this darker, it just makes the whole thing a little more interesting. Okay. And another local tool that I use a lot is a circle, the rail circle. Same thing. I'm going to double click on effect. 
I'm going to click and drag, make a circle around the statue, like where the sun is. I'm going to make sure invert is on and feather is off. Very important, because if it's not, look at this. If I add some exposure and feather is not on, ooh, very natural, very natural. But if you feather, boom, it gets a lot more natural because it's very feathered. So I just want to add a bit of exposure around the statue, maybe a little more magenta, you know, just a tad uh, like that. Check it out before after yes it's just ooh, you know it just really helps the eyes going here and um so let's see here full screen that's basically the final result that's really what i like now bonus tip is and this is completely up to you but bonus tip you can go to the new color grading here and have fun so basically what that is this is the shadows this is the highlights and semitone what does that mean so for example, if I add some blue in the shadows, it's just going to add it in the darkest part of the photo. Okay, I can add some orange. I'm overdoing so you can see. But what I usually do is I just neutralize the shadows. You see, it's they're very warm. So I'm just going to bring this a little bit to the left. Oops, just a little tad to the left like this. And it's going to neutralize the shadows so there's not too much um, warmth in it. And I'm going to do the opposite into the highlights. I'm just going to add a bit more warmth. But you have to go very gentle. And then you can go for an oval look. I can go and make this whole thing a lot warmer, a lot bluer. You know, I think a lot more, maybe a lot more orange. Magenta, I, I don't need that because I got the white balance for it. But maybe a little more orange can be cool. And before, after. Not a huge deal, but it's kind of okay. And there you can make another adjustment in the shadows. So I can make the shadows darker. Brighter. I don't think I'm going to change that. You can double click to put it back at zero. I'm guessing, right? No. Oh, yes. You can. And then the highlights. I can make. The, maybe I make the highlights a bit brighter. Maybe I make the overall photo a little bit brighter here. Let's see. Before, after. So when I'm happy with the photo, sometimes what I do just for the fun is I take what I did here and I press Command Shift C, copy everything that I did, and I take my underexposed photo and press Command V. Okay, at first it looks really weird, but then I hold on the option key to do my black point. See, it's way too dark. And then I do my white point way brighter, you see, until the sun comes up and I go back. And then I boost the exposure because it's an underexposed photo. And I do it until it matches a bit what I did on the HDR. And then I, I take both. I press C and Shift Tab to go in full screen mode. So on the left side, you have the underexposed photo you can see it was very noisy on the right side you have the hdr and i compare both results and the underexposed photo which is this one is actually even cleaner than the hdr so and so i think the one i'm going to use at the end is going to be the underexposed photo so again uh yeah it's just a little trick sometimes the hdr is better quality sometimes it's not you know the way lightroom does hdr is not the way like aurora or other hdr software does it it just adds up the data but sometimes when there's a crazy sunset, the underexposed photo actually turns out to be better. So check it out for yourself. So again, this is the before. And this is the final photo. I really love it. Don't forget to get my book for free. Uh, link under the video. It comes with a masterclass, which is sometime live. So check it out. And you will see the masterclass is really cool. The book is really cool. You can get it for free fist until the end of the masterclass. It may change your life as a photographer. It did for many people. Check it out.